I'm Lorelai King, director and co-founder of digital publishing company Creative Content Limited. Today I'm talking to Paul Kent, writer, editor, radio producer, and author of our latest slowdown title, The EU, Should We Stay or Should We Go? Thanks for chatting with us today, Paul. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about how this book came about. Well, it was about April this year. So for those of you listening in the future, that's 2013. Um, And... The popularity of UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party, seemed to have done a a sudden spike. And they'd been around for a good 17, 20, almost 20 years now. And suddenly they hit the headlines as they'd never done before. And suddenly they were coming up in the opinion polls. They were breathing down the Conservatives next for third place behind Labour, Conservative, UKIP, Lib Dems, nowhere. And so they got a lot of headlines. And so eventually, to cut a long story short, David Cameron, the prime minister, decided that you know, he had to do something about this or at least address the issue. And the way he chose to do that was to promise a referendum or at least promise legislation, which would then lead to a referendum, which is very odd because in this country, we haven't had a referendum on anything. We, we, we very rarely have them. And the last one in the EU was 1975. So I thought, I'm going to have to vote if there's a referendum. How am I going to vote? I've no idea how I'm going to vote. I don't know what the issues are. I'd better find out. Hence the book. And what was the most surprising thing you learned when researching this book? Well, um, the book is full of surprises, um, largely because I was <laughs> ignorant of what, what the EU was, what it does, its history. And I think, you know, I, I'm the average guy. I'm the average guy trying to find out what's going on. And the most surprising thing was how rubbish the EU is at marketing itself. And it's no wonder people don't know things. It's no wonder people have the wrong idea about it because they don't help you to find out. There's loads of websites, but they don't say anything. They're done in a really terrible, non-intuitive way. And so try to find the information. Only the dedicated would try. And um, so I thought I'd do it for everybody so they don't have to. Give, give, give. Yeah, um, absolutely. I agree with you about the websites. I'm, I was actually shocked at the poor design. They are well. boring. The whole hmm. point is boring. And when they try to actually jazz things up, there was um, a headline a few weeks ago about when the EU tried to do a children's book, a graphic book about Mr. and Mrs. MEP. And if you've read that, it is absolutely terrible. And it does reveal some very uncomfortable truths for MEPs about how they live, how much they're paid, and how many people it takes to actually post a letter in an MEP's office. Four, in case you're wondering. But you'll have to read the book to uh, to find out <laughs> to more, find out that more about yeah. that. Uh, and, and on that subject, do, if I want to read this book, do I have to know much about the EU to understand it? Do you know, the great thing about this, the idea was... No, you don't have to know anything about the EU. You just have to, well, basically want to be a responsible citizen. Um, If you want to make an informed choice, if this referendum ever comes, which hopefully it will, and then we can get the subject over with, if you want to be a responsible citizen who is uh, exercising their democratic right to cast their vote, you will need this book to help you. But no, no previous experience necessary. <laughs> Your title is being published in both ebook and audiobook versions. Now, I know you've worked extensively as a radio producer and audiobook director. Um, is it hard to have your work read by someone else? No, actually, it's not. I, it, it's surprisingly painless because basically a, a, an audio, whether it's your work or anybody else's, is a collaboration. And so basically, we all want the same thing, which is a damn good listen. And so you know, whatever it takes to get a damn good listen. And my ideas might not be, you know, the only idea that works. It's nice to have input from other places. And what's next for you, Paul? What else have you got in the pipeline? A lot. Um, I'm currently working on a book on Voltaire, which is coming out next month, I believe. And um, there's a couple of other titles in the pipeline, one about how to write for first-time writers. Fantastic. And also a book on Dante which uh, is called There's Something About Dante. So there's a scoop for you. And finally, Paul, are you going to give us a clue as to how you might vote? Absolutely in the not. No. The whole point of this book <laughs> is that it's completely impartial. You know, I'm not writing for a newspaper. I'm not an EU apologist. I'm just an ordinary guy who just wants to know what's best for his country. And so, you know, read the book. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. I think the point is that In Belgium and Luxembourg, voting is compulsory. 
in EU elections. Everywhere else in the EU, it's not. And it certainly isn't in the UK. So people have fought and died for the right to vote. Let's honour them by doing our civic duty. Thanks so much. I've been talking to Paul Kent, author of The Lowdown, The EU, Should We Stay or Should We Go, published both in audio and ebook formats in September 2013 by Creative Content Limited. To learn more, visit our website, creativecontentdigital.com.